Hello friends, it's Eric Lee here with Equity Real Estate and Elite Agent Training. And I've gotten a request from an agent to talk about how to price a home correctly. And when a client pushes back and says they want to try a little bit higher, how do you set it up for price corrections later? So let's first of all talk about how to price a home correctly. I am not going to show you how to use your MLS to do comps because you should already know how to do that. If you don't know how to do that, then talk to your broker and get that training specifically because there's different MLS systems across the country and mine would only apply to my MLS. So let's talk though about how to get the comps. A lot of agents start out and we feel like we need to have three comps because that's what appraisers use and we have to be like appraisers and we don't, okay? That's not our job. Our job is to inform our clients. And usually when we're building comps, we haven't even been out and seen the home yet. Appraisers wouldn't do that. They wouldn't put together comps without even seeing the home. So um, what, what I like to do is this, and, and let me give you a little bit of background first. There's three different strategies that realtors use in pricing a home. One are the new agents. They don't know any better. And so they pull comps and they pull the three highest comps and they don't know what the home is like. It may or may not be related to those high comps. Most of the time when I pull comps, there's nearly $100,000 spread between the high comps and the low comps, just based on quality of the home. Um, there's a lot of damage people can do, or there's a lot of care they can put into their home. So some newer agents will just use the three highest comps, and they do that because when they go out and they meet with the clients, and they say, this is... Uh, these are the three highest clients are excited. They list with them, but the home doesn't sell. Okay. Because it is not a model home. It has not been cared for. It does not have all the upgrades. It's a normal home like most of them are. So I say that's a rookie mistake because you don't stay in business listing homes and not selling homes. Okay. You stay in business helping people sell homes. So you haven't done your job if you just pulled the three highest comps. On the other side of the spectrum, there's some agents that get, that sit down and they're like, I sell 400 homes a year and I'm the only person that knows anything about it. And they have a great sales spill. They really do. And, and you would believe them. I would believe them. And they sit down and they say, your home is worth this. And I guarantee we'll have it sold in 30 days or less. Now, in the last two years, that was no brag, right? But we're shifting into a different market right now where 30 days or less might be a good thing. And they have a guaranteed sales program. And I've noticed over time that most of those, they're selling the home below market value. Okay. So if the average market time is two to three months and they're guaranteeing 30 days or less, it's not because they have spectacular advertising. It's because they're, priced, they're using some of the lower ended comps so that it flies off the shelf. And some people even say it's a strategy. We're going to price it low to generate extra interest and get into a bidding war and things like that. And that might be their strategy. Okay. And then there's the other people like me that just like to inform our clients and come prepared and let them know what their house is really worth. And we're going to do our best to hit that target. So what I like to do is I like to have three comps on the high range because I haven't seen the home. Maybe it is gorgeous inside. I like to have three comps on the low range. Maybe they had an anger management issue or they let their dogs potty train in the house or whatever. We've seen it all, right? So I like to have three high, three low, and then three in the middle. And most homes will find nine comps. I can fit that on three different pages. And the reason that's important to me is I used to do lots of job interviews. And when you went into a job interview, two or three pages for your resume was the maximum recommended because people can digest that amount of information. If I dump 20 pages and 100 comps on their desk, they're not. it's going to be information overload. They're going to shut down. And they're not going to be able to make a decision. And I have not helped them out. So... Three sets of comps, three high, three medium, three low. I talk to them about different strategies that realtors use just in case they've interviewed other realtors that have used those strategies. And they're like, oh, shit, I don't want to work with that guy because he's playing games with me. Okay. And then I'll be really honest with them. I'll say, all right, after walking through your home, these three homes on the high end, they've got the granite countertops and they have the hardwood floors and stuff. And you don't have that. Your house is beautiful and you've taken great care of it. But if you were a buyer and you walked through those homes and then you walked through this home and they were the same price, which one would you pick? You'd pick the other one, right? And always put them in the buyer's shoes because people are really emotional about their own home and how it looks and how it feels. So put them in the buyer's shoes. If you were the buyer, which one would you pick? All right. And then you help them pick the right price range for their home. And maybe it is the great, maybe it is fantastic. And you say, your, your house is blowing me away we would base it off these three higher comps. Or if a kid's punched a hole in every wall and you know they, they you 
got a special bedroom for the dogs to poop in, then you're going to need to be honest with them and say, this is something that is a problem. And they know it's a problem, you know, but because of this, we need to use these three lower comms or we can fix these problems and then we can move it up possibly to this middle range here and get you a different, uh, get you a different price set. So first of all, that's how we price a home. We don't have to pick just three comps. We want to, especially since we haven't seen the home yet. So go out prepared. Then when you sit down with them, if they say, well, can we just try higher? Sure, sure. My job is to inform you. Okay, so I'm telling you this is where I think it's at. Have I ever been surprised over the year? All the time. You know, th this is our, uh, our uh, best guess for today. But we've seen crazy market shifts. And anybody that was so bold as to say this is exactly what's going to happen, It'd be rough to do today. So if they say, can we just try it higher? Can we just do this? Can we, you know, can we try that or whatever? Sure, let's try it. However, I want you to know that if the home is overpriced, this is what buyers think. Again, put yourself in a buyer's shoes. And if that home sits on the market for a month or two months, every buyer thinks, hmm, what's wrong with it? There's got to be some problem with it, right? That's what buyers do. And so we do not want to be that seller where the home is, is laboring on the market month after month. So if we try this higher price, we try it for a week and then we're going to evaluate after one week. If we don't have any calls on it, plain and simple, there's only one thing it's overpriced because they're on their computers. That's where everybody's looking initially. They're on their computers. They see your home, they see other homes. I'll have professional photos done. So that's out of the question. It's, it's not a question of are the photos good enough? It's does our home compare with the other homes in this price range? And if it doesn't, we're not even going to get a phone call. If we're getting phone calls and showings, but no offers, then we have a second potential issue. It could be condition. Okay, because obviously our home is, is good enough that we're drawing people in. It's not good enough to get them to make an offer. And then we have two things we can do. We can either upgrade the condition a little bit or we can reduce the price a little bit. Okay, now we have a couple of different options. Um, and then if obviously if we're getting offers, we're in the sweet spot, but we want to get to that place quickly. So we're going to evaluate this every single week. And depending on the calls that we're getting, on the traffic that we're getting, if we're getting offers or not, then we're going to need to do a price reduction. And these are the price reductions that we need to do. And then you talk price point. Okay. So if I've got a home listed at, let's say, 515, all right, does it do me any good to go to 510? No, it doesn't. Because people, when they're on their computers, they're doing searches and it's not, hey, I got pre-approved to 515. Nah, no, they got pre-approved to big round numbers, 500, maybe 525, something like that. But if I'm listed at 515, I'm not going to I'm not going to hit any new target audience until I get below 500. That's a massive price point right there. And when I hit five, 500, all of a sudden I've got a million people that are shopping up to 500,000. But even if I put 501, I miss that search engine altogether. OK, so nobody finds me. And would I be willing to negotiate down a thousand bucks? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So it doesn't make any sense to be 501, 504, anything like that. Get it below those major price points and have that real honest, hard conversation right up front with your clients so that they know if the house doesn't sell, this is what's going to happen. And that sets you up for that conversation later where it's a hard conversation. Calling up and saying, hey, this isn't, you know, things aren't moving. Uh, we tried it. That's great. And now we need to do something different. If you haven't set up that conversation for later on, it's really hard to come around to later because you feel like you failed. They feel like you failed. And that's bad. All right. So if you're going to risk and, and do something high, don't ever make it look like you're failing. Have a real honest conversation with them. They're choosing that price, pr price point. You're going along with it with the caveat that later on, you're going to talk price reductions because you've got to get in that sweet spot. All right. Hopefully that helps. Thank you.